Okay, this video is going to be focusing on the deformation of materials, and I've just set up this kind of cascaded figure here. Let me zoom on in so we can get a better view. Okay, so the idea is that we have 10,000 pounds or 10 kips um, pulling on this shape. Now we're just going to assume, make a couple of assumptions here. One, that this is a solid connection right here, okay? So there's no uh, holes, vacancies, anything. That's a solid connection uh, between wall and A. So that's kind of a condition that we have set on the left side, zero deflection there. And then as we have uh, A connected to B, and then B connected to C, and then C's also feeling that 10 kip force there. Um, I just made up a material that it was going to be, so I assumed um, cold rolled steel, and uh, I gave us some areas, which, you know, can be referenced over here. So, um, just a little bit of details about the material itself. Um, in orange, I'm going to write over, just underline a couple things, that uh, the steel starts to, or at least cold rolled steel, starts to yield, yet yeah, right around 75 KSI. Uh, cold rolled steel is a little bit higher than regular steel and uh, certainly a much higher than regular iron. Um, I gave us a, oops, I gave us a uh, elasticity uh, of typical steel just so that we'd be familiar with it. And the main, well, some of the equations that we're going to be using are just written down over here. Um, force over area and then also um, I always like to do the, the deformation uh, equation as flea. I know some uh, folks like to do PL over EA and that's fine they have their own reasons for that. So let me zoom on out here for a minute. Here's our situation. Um, with this situation um, I just wanted us to kind of focus on order of operations because you can kind of get overwhelmed with all the different steps that you're going to need to take. First of all we got to find out if this material is just going to yield in which case that's going to throw all of our deformation uh, calculations over so we need to make sure that the material is not going to get past that yielding point and if it is just say the material will yield and you can learn about how plastic deformation and yada 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 later so let's get ready let's dive right in i'm going to zoom us in so we have plenty of room Okay, right here. So I'm going to start off with cross section A, which we'll do this in blue, peaceful blue. So the stress is going to, of A is going to equal 10 kips or 10,000 pounds all over the area, which we've assumed is one inch squared. And as you can see that this is supposed to be pounds. So when I calculate this, the math's easy enough. That's going to be 10,000 PSI or 10 KSI. Okay? So I'll box that in. 10 KSI. I'm going to go to our next area, which if I zoom out, I can just show you what areas I'm talking about. First, we just did A. We just did A. Now we're going to do B and C. Notice how the 10 kips acting on the right over here. Notice how that's acting on all of the, the different shapes we have here, A, B, and C, because they're all connected together. So I'm going to zoom on in again. Go back to our blue. OK. So the stress of B is going to equal, once again, 10,000. Or I'm just going to say 10 kips over 0.5 inches squared 
which is simple enough, simple math, just twice our 10 KSI, which is going to be 20 KSI. And there's our second. So both of these, at this point, we know both of these have not yielded because they're below the 75 KSI. And as you get more and more comfortable with this, you'll stop with this whole checking every single one and you'll start just looking at really critical points. But, but we'll just draw it out now and then later on you can speed it up yourself. Point two inches squared which is going to equal 50 KSI. Okay, so what did we learn from this? 10, 20, and 50, all of them are below our number right here, let's see, right here, of 75 KSI. So we know that the material will not yield and it's going to be functioning as we would expect. Thus, it is applicable to use this equation down here, the deformation one. So, I'm going to zoom on in for us. Since we're going to use this function right here, let's just shoot on into that. I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use orange. Okay. So the equation goes like this. Deformation, oops. Deformation equals, and I like to use this one, F-L-E-A, okay? So we were given A, that's our cross section. We were given E, that's from the material elasticity. The length, which was uh, described in the picture up above, each of these sections is six inches long. And then also we have our force, which we're going to just use in pounds. So really watch your units here, because you don't want to be start putting in feet in length and inches squared on the bottom. You'll, you'll start to uh, have issues. So I'm just going to start with deformation of A. That'll be 10,000. 10,000 times 6, 10,000 times 6, divided by E, which is going to be our 29, and I should just say E to the 6, but I'll write it out for you guys, times 10 to the 6, and then the area, which is just 1 inch squared, okay? And I've already pre-worked this out, so I don't have to fiddle with my calculator in front of you guys. And that's going to be 0. Point. And then let me scroll on over so we can see it. 0. 0.00207. So 0. 0.00207. And someone once asked me, how do I determine when do I stop with the number of digits that I have here? And my general rule is that once, and let me get, turn to green here, once I start seeing about three significant figures here, um, that's when I make my decision to stop because you're starting to get into below one percentile or one percent um, air, and to me, one percent is all that matters. So that's kind of accuracy. So there's our results there. Okay. And we're talking about in inches, by the way. So that's the amount of deformation. So if I were to say, this is for A, okay, with this force applied, let me zoom on out and we'll show you, 0 0.00207, okay? So what we're saying is, oops, we're moving around all over the place here, that this box, A, will actually extend out this direction in that amount of distance like we're talking 
small amount of extension and that's partly to do with the amount of surface uh, cross-sectional area that is there. So we're talking about adding only 0 0.002 inches to the length. I keep getting that here. Okay, so let me keep diving in here. Let me scoot on down to where we were. I'm going to go for a different color now. We'll go for red. Deformation of B, which is going to be the same equation, but I'm just going to write it out. It's still going to be your 10,000 pounds. And the length is still going to be 6. The material is going to be the same, which we need to pay attention to that when we start using different materials. Times 10 to the 6. And then also our area, which is 0.5 inches squared. So, as I did in the previous one, I already had it worked out. And the answer there is just basically going to be twice twice the size. And that's just having to do with the change in the cross-sectional area. 0 0.004. And it's 1, 2. Um, and this is just hasn't to do with rounding. So it's not necessarily twice what was above, just due to rounding. That's in inches. Notice these numbers are fairly small. If you start tossing in bigger numbers, you will notice like physical deformation when a load's applied. And this this actually this isn't a very big um, deformation, but when you start talking about you know airplane wings and things like that that are getting really big forces being applied, um, you can get significant deformation, and that can really screw up your design. Okay, so let me just toss us into the final one here. We'll go back to a light blue. And let's see here. We're using, this is for C now, so it's just a different cross-sectional area. Same force, so 10,000 times 6. Move us over, times 6. All over, once again, 29 times 10 to the 6 power and then instead of putting 0.5 on the bottom it's going to be 0.2 because that's the cross-sectional area of, of C as noted above and I'm just going to tell you what that equals it's 0 0.01 and let me just 01034 inches. Now, this is within the material's capacity to extend this much and not yield. However, this is a significant extension. I mean, we're talking ten thousandths of extension there. And a change in length like that can really start to affect an assembly, the whole assembly. Like there might be another material that might not be able to extend that much and that will be forced to take on more of the load where this linkage might be, you know, expected to take that load. So when you start getting, when you start getting really uh, intricate designs, you just have to make sure that you don't start getting 10 thousandths extension and everything because you will start moving that load around within the design. Okay, so I mean fairly basic um, calculations, but it, it's just so you have to have this whole order of operations, make sure that the material is not yielding, and then you can go into the calculations. You don't just dive in like you did in you know elementary school. So. Anyway, uh, feel free to comment, give me uh, guidance and what you'd like to see, and I'll try and fix that error that you've been seeing pop up in this video. Have a good one.